Information fueled. Opinion driven. This is Nashville's Morning News with Dan Mendes. And so, my fellow Americans, we talk news. 806, Nashville's Morning News on Super Talk 997 WTN. Good morning to you, friends. Eight o'clock hour, Chris Hand is in the house. He's had a very eventful weekend. And it is July 29th. Appreciate you being here for Monday. David Cohn, old friend, is uh, joining us this morning from Crane & Company on the Daily Wire. Uh, David, always great to have you on. And uh, for folks that don't know, you do sports and... um, but you do a lot more than than sports over there in Crane and Company. You guys talk about sports, but you also talk about, you know, culture and all kinds of things. And so I asked you on uh, this morning because I want to get your take on this horrifying uh, Olympic ceremony, the opening ceremonies of the Olympics, where, it, I mean, I, I don't know how else to describe it. Bunch of drag queens, and they are said to be making fun of the Last Supper. There's some debate over that. There is no debate that apparently one of these drag queens actually um, had a wardrobe malfunction, and among other things. And it's just, it's just bizarre. So, talk a little bit about uh, what the opening Olympics of opening ceremony of the Olympics was all about, and the outrage that has ensued. That's not a wardrobe malfunction, Dan. That's the feature, right? Not the bug, which is what I really want to get into. But thank you so much for having me on this Monday. Five weeks ago on our show, Crane and Company, I, you know, I do a weekly segment called Get Off My Lawn, where I can sort of vent on these uh, different sports topics that intersect with culture. Well, five weeks ago, I told the Olympics to get off my lawn. I also canceled them on Matt Walsh's show when I had an opportunity to guest host because they continue to uh, defend this idea that men can compete Pete in women's sports, which I've I've talked about many times on your show before, yep. all while saying that women, the, the the empowerment of female athletes is the main goal for the 2024 Olympics, right? So I've been talking about how this 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 globalist organization of the Olympics has been problematic for the entire summer. Said, so don't be surprised, whatever happens, whatever you see this summer at the Olympics. But even I could not have fathomed that they would have the opening ceremony feature a a, a drag queen reenactment of the Last Supper with a menage a trois and exposed genitalia. And when you get into this 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 whole thing of oh now there seems to be some debate on whether or not they were actually mocking Christianity. Make no mistake, the intent was to mock Christianity. Okay, that 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 is the under that is the quiet well, part. What they're, David, that is the intent. What they're trying to do, David, is trying to tap dance. Because I I think that part of what they did, they knew going in that they were going to make fun of Christianity by mocking the Last Supper. And then they decided, okay, and then what we're going to say is this. But, I mean, I think it's obvious to anybody who saw it, and you're right, um, the wardrobe malfunction, and I can say it because it's a medical thing. uh, You know, one of these, uh, you know, drag queen dancers had a testicle dropout. And it's just sort of like, okay, so I'm a guy. I know exactly how to make sure that my testicles don't fall out of my shorts. That was intentional. Well, that's where you have to utilize Occam's razor and just use some common sense. Okay, let's look at who put this on, right? Not just the host country of France, which is already has a propensity to be uh, uh, very eccentric as a country, and the organization of the Olympics, which I've already said is a globalist organization who, you know, has, in my opinion, no values and no characters, but specifically the individual who created this, this creative artist, this Thomas Jolly, this homosexual man who I mean, just look at a couple photos of this guy and tell me that the intent wasn't to mock Christianity. You don't see them going after any other religions in terms of, you know, they, they, there wasn't a, a mockery of Muhammad or anything like that. But take that aside. What, you, what you're talking about here where they, you know, want to pull something off and then have a statement ready to go in case there is sort of some controversy or fiasco is what's called this Mott and Bailey fallacy right so what you do is is you 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 put forward something that actively mocks christianity this guy spent two years creating this two years creating this opening ceremony and you're going to tell me that everything that you saw in there was some sort of accident no it's false everything was intentional 
But if you get called on it, right, then you retreat to a safer position, which is, no, 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 this is about inclusivity. No, 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 this, what we're trying to do here is about tolerance, right? Now, you tell me, you tell me how a, a, a group full of drag queens that's standing and resembling the Last Supper, and they can talk about it being Dionysus or Bacchus or the Greek gods and this and that, you tell me how that has anything to do with tolerance. It's just Mott and Bailey fallacy, and what I want, I want to talk to the people out there listening to your show right now who may not be Christians, right? Because this is where we really get to the heart of this issue. If you're not a Christian, if you're not religious, maybe you're an atheist, maybe you even go further than that. Maybe you hate the very idea of God, and you, and, and you, and you don't want to have anything to do with it in your life. How is this still appropriate for the world's largest sporting event? 100 years ago in 1924 in the same city of Paris, the Olympics coined their motto, faster, higher, stronger. Those are the ideals for the Olympic Games, where we can go and compete and see what mankind is capable of on the athletic scale, right, on the world, on the world stage. This isn't some art festival down at your local theater. How is this remotely appropriate to kick off what should be the world's largest sporting event? It's not, and I'm glad they got called on it. What's well, an agenda, uh, David? I mean, obviously, I don't, and I've, I've said this so many times, I, if I had a nickel every time I said it, but I went most of my life without having drag queens thrust into my eyesight at every turn. Yeah. And you know what I mean? I just, I, yeah. all of a sudden, everywhere I turn... There's drag queens, and I, I turn on the Olympics, and there's some guy in a full-on beard in a sequin dress. And I, yeah. I don't believe that it is appropriate. It is also, in my opinion, rather bizarre that they think that the majority of the world wanted to see this. Now, some people will say, and I said this in the uh, 5 o'clock hour, well, it is Paris, and Paris is known for these kinds of things, but that's no excuse. And so for me, as I watched all of this bizarreness i think more people were probably turned off by this and decided to heck with it if this is what the olympics is going to be about this year full of agenda then we're just not going to bother to watch because if that's what the opening ceremony was then lord knows what else is uh, you know going to be thrust into our faces and so the question then is so is there a way to tell if this really is going to impact the total viewership yeah, you know, I think it will. I have to say, I, I'm so proud of what happened during the Bud Light moment, what they call the the, the Bud Light boycott, which I was wrong about. I, I didn't think, I thought that would last for about two weeks and sort of, you know, we, and when I say we, I mean, we with a, a rational brain, um, you know, would would be upset about what happened with, with Bud Light, but then just, you know, kind of go back to our daily lives, and it's still, it's the only beer that's there at the concession stand, so you still order it. No, I mean, people dug in to the point where if you went to a concert, Bud Light was on the shelf. No one was drinking that, right? So I think that that people are starting to understand that they have purchasing power. You can use the term boycott, or they talk about cancel culture, I think of in terms of purchasing power. If you have money, which everybody has some amount of money, then you have power. And you get to control where your dollar bills go, and you get to control where your eyeballs go. And I, for one, I have to talk about sports for a living. I need to watch this stuff, and yet I still turned it off. I'm not watching this. Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Finals in the NHL, in the in the first period of the game when it's tied, they, they start showing an LGBT pride flag. I turned it off. I'm not watching it. You know, I can host my show without partaking and without without giving my eyeballs and my dollar bills uh, to this nonsense. But I also want to tell the people listening there, use your purchasing power, but also don't run from the world. You can't run from everything. We can't just quit and give up on all these things. You know, refocus your energy into sporting events that are good or into any events that are good. There's there's this Cormac McCarthy quote that I that I heard one time, which is, if you think you can live in this world, and be no part of it. You are wrong. We can't just all run away and and just you know to a farm and live all by ourselves. We have to fight back on a daily basis, and that's why I'm so proud of shows like yours, shows like ours, because we're standing up here and we are fighting against this nonsense every day. Eight fifteen, Nashville's morning news on Super Talk ninety nine seven WTN. David Cohn is joining us from Crane and Company over at the Daily Wire.
Uh, let's talk about uh, the Tennessee Titans. Of course, we are in Nashville. And let's let's broaden out a little bit to the NFL and, and talk about, you know, the, the woke of the NFL. It, it seems like a lot of the outrage over the wokeness of the NFL and Black Lives Matter and all that, has it has it tapered down a little bit? The, the outrage of the people that have decided they're not going to watch anymore, just stop watching and all of that has gone away. What can we expect this year? Well, look, I think Roger Goodell has done a pretty solid job of of trying to ride this line where he is, you know, appeasing towards uh, diehard old school football fans, but also trying to usher in the new school. And look, anytime you have a fence rider like that, it almost never works. But the NFL is such a, a, a huge brand, especially in America, that, you know, I think that he has done a pretty good job, especially um, on, on the, the, the largest scales of what the NFL is doing. Now, I obviously still have my problems when I see that certain NFL franchises are, are partnering with the, the National Gay Flag Football League to, the, to, to send their money towards it. I, I don't understand that kind of stuff. I don't understand why Roger Goodell wants there to be international games overseas all the time. I, I know that he wants to globalize the sport, right, just like the NBA has done, like the MLB has done, but those are, two, those are, those are very different sports. Football is very American, and there are so few games. You can't play 162 games like you can in baseball. So anytime you take a game away from the Titans here in Nashville and you send it overseas, that's one of only 17 games that we get. But despite that, I do try my best to focus on the product on the field. I dedicated 20 years of my life to playing this game. And so I do love breaking down the schematics. I do love keeping up with the trades and the narratives, what's going around. I think the uh, the Tennessee Titans, despite losing Derrick Henry, they're going to be very fun to watch on offense. Obviously, they'll go as far as Will Levis is able to take them, but Brian Callahan comes from a coaching family, offensive-minded guy. I think he's going to he's gonna find it a little more difficult to call plays here than when he was with the Bengals and had Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase to help run the offense, but I expect him to do quite well. And then uh, some other big news out of the NFL this week, Jordan Love, the Packers quarterback, signs the highest contract in, in NFL history on a per year basis after only starting for one year. So that's where we are. That's how big the NFL brand is right now. A guy who's only started for one season yeah. and had a pretty good year, made the playoffs, just became the highest paid quarterback ever. You tell me how that gets done. That's pretty cool. All right. Also very cool. So this is you, David Cohn. It's a song called Just What America Needs. And uh, I think this is the song that we talked about a little while ago. And a lot of my listeners, David, loved this song. And you've got wow. others that are out there as well. So you're a musician here in Nashville. And um, I love your music. A lot of other folks do, too. You have any other uh, songs out right now? Well, I can't thank you enough for asking me about this, and the timing could not be any more perfect. And we didn't plan this because you had no idea, but I have a new song being released in two weeks, okay? This new song is coming out on Friday, August 9th, and it's called American Made. And I'm so proud to release this song. We're putting a music video together for it now, and I'm going to send you American Made. I'm going to send you a link to it early since you were kind enough to ask me about my music, but that song is going to come out on Friday, August 9th, and if you like just what America needs, you're going to love American Made. Um, but in the interim, I have released two other songs. Mm -hmm. One's called Flavors of Kentucky, and the other one is called Southward Bound. And I would encourage anyone to go listen to them. You can listen anywhere where you get your music, Spotify, Apple, YouTube. And these songs, all of these six songs that I'm releasing this summer were produced by the amazing Kent Wells, Dolly Parton's producer. Uh, he's fantastic and believed in me. So we got plenty of songs coming out here, and I'm really proud of all of them. So you're going to... Maybe play some live shows or anything like that, or I mean, if you're if you play here in Nashville, you. can you can you let me know and I can go and we can also talk about it. Absolutely, man. I'll tell you, I'm I'm, I'm working on getting all that stuff set up, and this is the music capital of the world, so we got to do it. All right, very good, David. As always, thank you very much for your analysis on uh, you know what's going on today with the Olympics and football and uh, your music as well. Looking forward to the new song, and yes, please send me a link and uh, I'll be sure and get the word out. It is eight twenty two.